Welcome to episode seven of the Cult of Pedagogy podcast. This is Jennifer Gonzalez, and today we are talking about timed math tests. Before we get started, I told you I would always give you a teaching tip at the beginning of each episode. So here's my tip for you today. Always plan to end your class five minutes before the class is supposed to end. In other words, if you're teaching a class and students are supposed to be released at 10 a.m., have it in your head right away that they are you're going to be done at 9.55. This seems kind of like a no-duh tip, but for myself as a teacher, I would see 10 a.m. as the end point, and I would try to squeeze as much as I possibly could into that class. And it caused a lot of stress. It caused a lot of rushing at the end, a lot of um, me sort of shouting out the last few bits of instruction or in whatever it was as students were getting up and leaving the room. And when I figured out that I should actually mentally plan to be done at 9.55, things always went much, much better. Because Typically, I wouldn't be done at 9.55. I'd be done at 9.56 or 57, and there would still be that nice, relaxed buffer time for everybody to pack up, people to ask last-minute questions, and I wasn't frantically trying to get everything done. So if this sounds uh, typical to you or it sounds familiar to you, try to have that discipline of just always saying, I am going to be done five minutes early. Not that I hope I will, but if it's 9.50 or 9.53 and you're not done yet, that's the time to decide what to cut out because you're not going to make it. Don't try to squeeze it in. Okay, so that's my, that is my tip of the day. Today's going to be a shorter episode. I'm going to try now to answer one question per episode and just focus on that topic. I think it'll make it easier for people to find the episodes that pertain to what uh, they're most interested in. So this will be quicker. So here's the question that I'm going to answer today. Hi, Jen. I've got a question about elementary school math. Um, We're using some homeschool curriculum that asks us to do timed math facts pages each day. And there's 100 pages on each sheet, and it's five minutes. Um, My son can do them. However, he gets nervous when you put the timer into anything. And I remember back to when I was a kid, and I hated those too. Um... My homeschooling friends say, well, you know, if it feels like it's too stressful, don't do it. That's why you homeschool. Um, My husband thinks it's a good idea to do it because it teaches my son to work under stress and that there are times when there's some amount of drudgery involved with work. You know, it's boring to do these tests, but work often can be boring. Um... I don't think I really agree with either of those opinion ideas, but I'm not really sure what to do. I was wondering what math teachers think. Um, do they see any value of in these time tests? Are they still doing them? Um, you know, what are the benefits? What could be the drawbacks? And do we really need to do that much every day? Um, so, any ideas that you have, or any math teachers out there might have, would be great. Thank you so much for asking this question. I have got three kids of my own who are in elementary school, but I know very, very little about the teaching of math in elementary school. So this gave me an opportunity to do a lot of studying and research, and I found some really, really good stuff on this topic. So I am going to start by giving you what I found to be the very best resource on this subject. Um, This is an article called Research Suggests Time Tests Cause Math Anxiety, and it is by a Stanford professor named Joe Bowler. I'm going to put a link to it um, on the website, but this this article is from uh, a publication called Teaching Children Mathematics, and it comes out by the or it's put out by the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. The gist of the article is this: giving time test to students uh, it creates intense anxiety for certain kids that anxiety actually impacts their working memory. It actually sort of blocks them from being able to access information that they have. In other words, this can cause kids who are good in math to not be good in math. And repeated application of this strategy can cause a student who has lots of potential in mathematics to turn away from the subject and decide that they are not good at math. 
So the research on timed math tests says don't do it. There are lots of other better ways to assess math fluency and to, um, to build it. The person who wrote this article, Joe Bowler, she actually has a, a, another point also, not just that the timed math tests cause anxiety, but that they are misguided, that their emphasis on speed really is sort of a distraction from higher quality math instruction and higher quality math thinking. She says that what students need is something called uh, number flexibility. They need to be able to pull apart problems and find alter alternative ways of solving problems, and they need to develop mathematical thinking. And that the emphasis on uh, just getting an answer right quickly, it, uh, it gives students uh, the wrong perception that speed is, is what makes a good math mathematics student. One of the things that she recommends is doing a strategy called number talks. The teacher presents a problem to the class, has all of the students think about that problem in their head, hold up what she's calling a quiet thumb, basically a, a, a thumb held to the chest where only the teacher can see it, meaning I, I have the answer and I have a solution. And then, and the reason the quiet thumb is because uh, then there's not a lot of pressure to be the fastest and to get it done because once one or two kids says, hey, I got it, a lot of the other kids will just give up. So then once the majority of the students have the quiet thumb up, then the teacher starts taking ideas. How did you solve it? How did you solve it? How did you solve it? And these go up on the board and the students look at all of the different ways that it was possible to solve that problem. She says this is good for advanced students and the lower level students. The lower level students are seeing the thinking behind what the advanced students are doing. The advanced students are seeing other ways of processing this math. So the, the short answer is your, it's, your instincts are correct. The timed math tests that you, and the anxiety that you're seeing in your son, your instinct to not give him those anymore, uh, from what I'm seeing, that sounds correct. I would like to hear from more people, hopefully you can give more comments. Um, to this post to see, you know, to get some more people to weigh in on this, but I am not seeing anything that is really in favor of it. The only thing that I'm seeing is that some teachers, and I belong to some networks of teachers, so I threw this out to them and a lot of elementary math teachers responded. Uh, a few of them said that they liked the tests just because they were efficient. They said that it's a good way to assess a big group of students quickly, which wouldn't pertain to homeschooling anyway. And some of them said that it, it, they motivated a certain type of student that a lot of the kids were sort of motivated to do better than they did last time and the time pressure kind of got them really focused and, and challenged but they all acknowledged that there was that portion of students and in this study that was in the the other article the NCTM article it said it was about one-fourth of kids get intense anxiety and they, they all acknowledge that those kids really should not be assessed that way they should be assessed in other ways some schools in fact have dropped the practice of time tests at all, have said to teachers, you are not allowed to give time tests anymore. Now, these are uh, schools where the administration is clearly in touch with the research. Other teachers offered an alternative way to do time tests, and you may want to try some of these. One teacher, and I'm going to actually link to her blog post about this, her name is Heather LeBlanc, and she wrote a blog post called Using Backward Timing to Work on Math Fluency. Uh, her blog is All Things Upper Elementary. And so the process that she describes is using a timer, yes, but the timer doesn't count down to zero. The timer starts at zero and just times how long the students take. So you give the students 30 problems and set the timer. When a student is done, they raise their hand and the teacher records how long it took that student. And then another student raises their hand when they're done and she records how long it took that student. Then they all have their time, how long it took. And then they try to beat that time the next time around and the next time around. She says pretty clearly that if it takes a student longer than say three to five minutes, depending on what you're timing them on, to complete those problems, then they have too many problems on their paper and they should be given fewer next time. And this is a real good way to differentiate. You may give a student, one student only 20 and another 30 because of where they are. So she says that when she uses this and she describes the whole process and even how to chart it and everything, the students experience a lot less pressure and a lot less anxiety. So that is another way to use timing in a different way without it being so high pressure. A couple of other strategies some other teachers shared with me, which I thought was great. 
uh, one teacher says that she gives them tests but doesn't time them and says that anytime they can't automatically answer a problem, they have to sort of stop and figure it out, that they should circle the problem. And then later on, they can go back over those and note the ones that they don't have uh, an instant you know, recognition of the answer yet. I thought that was good. Another teacher just uses an observation sheet with her students. And I'm guessing this is with a smaller group of kids. So this would be great with homeschooling, that you just watch them, watch them take the take the do the problems, and the ones that they don't write an answer down for immediately, you just take note of which ones those were, and those are the ones that they need to to study on more. A couple of websites also were recommended. One is called uh, Reflex, which has uh, games that are built for building math fluency. Another is called Sumdog, sumdog.com. Both seem to be pretty similar. I'm familiar with Sumdog because they do this, they use it at my kids' school, but it's just games, basically. It's a, you know, um, you've got you've to shoot a bunch of balls that are in the air, and the balls actually have a problem in them, three plus four, and you've got to be able to answer correctly to be able to shoot that ball. And so it's really, it's just basic math, math facts. So if you haven't plugged him into these and he enjoys those types of things, this is probably a much more low-pressure way of having him practice those math facts without, uh, without the pressure of, of time. Although some of the games actually are timed. They end after a certain amount of time. So if you notice that he's still experiencing this anxiety, then I'd say stay away from those, um, those games. One last thing. I mentioned this article uh, from NCTM from the professor Joe Bowler. She is coming out with this website in January of 2015 that I am so excited about. And if you're listening and you're a math teacher, it's called ucubed.org. And I will put it in the show notes also because it's already up. It's just not populated yet, but it's ready and there looks like they're launching in January 2015. Joe Bowler, the article I mentioned at the beginning, it's it's beautifully written. Uh, she really, she can write about math teaching. So I would strongly recommend that you read the article and that you go and take a look at ucube.org. I'm going to try to get her uh, as a guest on the podcast because I really like listening to her talk about math and I think she's really on to something. YouCube is not it's not an app for kids necessarily to play. It, it is for math teachers it looks like to teach you better ways of teaching math and uh, it, it looks like it's going to be a great site so I would recommend that you take a look at it. Okay that's it. This is our podcast on timed math tests. If you have experiences with these or you have other ideas that you'd like to contribute please add comments to the uh, to the post on this podcast because I would really like to hear from more teachers about what your experiences have been and what you think about time math tests. If you have a question about teaching, about learning as it relates to parenting, about administrative stuff, about tech stuff, go to www.cultofpedagogy.com slash ask and there is a voice recorder right there where you can record your question or you can write it in if you'd rather not use your voice. Come on over to the site, too, and check out all the other stuff that we have. We've got book reviews and videos on instructional strategies and lots of stuff to make your teaching better. That is all for today. Have a great day.